All right, let's look at scientific notation because uh, many physics, chemistry, biology, when you do experiments, sometimes you end up with very small numbers or very large numbers when you're doing astronomy or something. Very small numbers come when you're looking at something microscopic. So in order to write a scientific notation, what we use is the largest place value with a non-zero digit as a reference and then write the number as decimal number between 1 and 10, and then times 10, you know, to the power that the place value is from. So, for example, in 2012, the U.S. debt is approximately $16 trillion. What does that mean? So take a look here. So you have these three zeros, thousand. This is going to be million, billion, trillion. So to write that in scientific notation, we one is our largest place value. So we would write the number as 1.6. And then the place value, you're going to have 13 places. So that's 10 to the 13, right? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can also say 16 times 10 to the 12. The diameter of an E. coli bacteria is about 0 0.000012 meters. So in scientific notation, we would write that as 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Or in the metric system, we also can call that as 1.2 microns. That's one thing nice about the metric system. You can go up and down between units by just multiplying or dividing by powers of 10. All right, so here's some exercises that we would like you to try. So pause this video right now, do these exercises, and then come back. All right, assuming you have come back from doing the problems, so let's start with this. One, two, three, four, five. So five decimal places, so that will become uh, 3.45 times 10 to the fifth. What do you think is the next one? So where decimal point is here, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, right? And then this time, because you're working with a small number, you're going to have negative four power. Good. So how do you decide whether it's positive power or negative power of 10? Look at what number you're representing. If you multiply by a positive power of 10, this digit, 3.45 times 10 to the fifth, is going to become a large number. Whereas 4.9 times 10 to the negative 4 is going to be a tiny number. So whether you have tiny number or big number would decide the number, the positive or negative exponent. That's the best way to think of that. What if you're given scientific notation? How do you go to decimal? So again, remember what I said. Multiplying by powers of 10, and we saw this in previous lecture, means move the decimal six places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the number is going to be what? Anyone? Remember, this is 1,000. This is million. So I will let you think about how you're going to write this in words. This would be a good exercise for you to uh, recall what each of these place values represent. All right, so here we're going to move the decimal places 12 places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's where the decimal place will go. If you're not sure, just rewind and watch again to make sure you can go from decimal numbers to scientific notation and vice versa. All right, rounding decimals. When you're rounding, we want to know to what degree of accuracy you are giving us the number. So nearest tenth of a mile, or nearest quarter of an inch, or nearest 100. That helps us communicate with each other. Visualizing a number on a number line helps in rounding a decimal. You can select the number on the tick mark nearest to the unrounded number for the numbers exactly halfway between tick marks Depending on the context, you can use two different conventions are there. One is to round up to the, to the right of the number line, or one is to round to the nearest even digit. All right, so if I asked you to round this to the nearest tenth, nearest tenth, the tenth place is 0.75. 
And 0.75, the number closest to that is this one. If this is equally far apart, but convention is to go to the next uh, digit closest on the right side. All right, let's round this to the nearest thousand. All right, so here is the number. 3,435 is going to be a number somewhere here. Which thousands is closer? Remember, 3,500 is closer to 3,435 uh, than 3,000 and 4,000. However, since you want 1,000, is 3,000 closer to 3,435 or 4,000? So you can see by where it's placed that 3,000 is closest to it. So that's why to round to the nearest thousands, it's going to be 3,000. So this digit 4 is less than 5, so you round to the 3. If this was 3,500 something, then you would round that to the 4,000. All right, what if I ask you to round to the nearest 100? Then which 100 is closer to 3,435? 3,400 or 3,500? And you can see that it's going to be 3,400. Okay. Rounding is used in many natural science experiments to indicate the accuracy of measurement, and it depends on what uh, equipment you are using to measure. So, for example, when we say rate of a person is 160.0, when it's written like that, it's not 160 pounds. What that means is that the actual weight is measured to the nearest tenth of a pound, and so the actual weight is less than 160.05 pounds and greater than or equal to 159.95 pounds. This is important to remember. So if you read a, a label, a nutrition label, and it says 0 grams of fat or 0, 0.0 grams of fat, think about what that really means. Often we use English units to measure and we can round to the near 16th or 8th of an inch. So take a look. Here's a sewing tape, measuring tape, and here's a measuring tape, one of those hard measuring tapes that we used to measure, like height of a wall and stuff like that. Look at the difference. Look at the number of tick marks here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is eighth of an inch tick marks, whereas here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is 16th of an inch. So when you measure things, it's not always 10 tick marks. So if you pick things, anything that you measure in your life, you'll see what kind of scale you're using to measure. Here's some measuring cups. which You can use ounces, or you can use liters, or you can use cup measures. So here I have water, and I'm saying that the closest I can measure is 8 ounces. Whereas in this case, I can say it's about 225 milliliters. So we, it's important to know how to round so you can measure things. So measuring is something practical. They are used, you, can, you have measuring in many jobs, construction, roads, bridges, cooking. Uh, pretty much anything you do, you're probably measuring something out all the time in cups or in ounces or tablespoons or meters and so on. I know that I showed you my face at the beginning of the lectures, but you haven't gotten a chance to see Dr. Paul Martin at Marathon. So we thought how we would add this picture here. This is Dr. Paul Martin, and he and his family built this bridge on their own in, on one of their lands. So this is a bridge construction. He had to use a lot of measuring. So it's perfect for the end of this lecture here. And so in English, all system here, we use pounds, yards, feet, and it's cumbersome to go from yards to feet to inches. But in a metric system, you just go like decimal system, moving in powers of 10. Like one kilometer is 1,000 meters. One meter is 100 centimeters. It makes it easy to convert from kilometers to meters to centimeters. And we'll see this in a little bit later. Here's your homework.